Thursday, and I promise today I'm not going to talk about how cold it is. Instead, we will talk about how frightfully chilly it is. And it's not even that cold. My body is just climatizing and getting used to winter. It's only minus 16 Celsius right now. It's supposed to go down to minus 18 before I get started work. For some reason, it's still getting colder before I get going. But minus 18, it's not that cold yet. But it just feels that way because I'm used to summer. It was nice. But that doesn't matter because we're going to have fun today. We're going trucking. I believe I have a load to pick up in Toulon. And I have to take the green roll tight flat to go pick up a load going to St. Joseph, Missouri. That is the plan for today. And all the while, we're going to stay warm, we're going to stay happy, it's going to be a good day, we're going to stay positive. The brakes will not be frozen on the trailer or the truck. Everything is going to work perfect, nothing is going to go wrong. Let's hope. <laughs> I'll see you at the truck. We just got here. Mine is 22. It's fancy too. We're just getting warmed up. Huh. See what I did there? <laughs> it's gonna get a lot colder. Wait till that thing reads minus 32. That'll make more Manitoba sense. Hello, old girl. We're gonna have a good day, okay? The Joe Rogan Experience. Everyone knows Joe Rogan, right? Uh, he's the biggest podcaster in the world right now, or at least the biggest podcaster in the United States. Uh, very often we have to remember when people say, it's the biggest in the world. Usually that means it's the biggest in the US. <laughs> but I, I, I honestly think he does have the biggest one in the world. He's a very popular guy. He used to host Fear Factor, and before that he was on UFC. So he's a popular guy. Everyone knows Joe Rogan. I've been listening to him in the mornings now because it relaxes me and his content so far overall is non-political. I used to listen to podcasts every day on the way into work that uh, seem to be getting more and more political and I've noticed that with a lot of things. Everything seems to be getting politicized, especially if it's coming from the US. That's not a criticism, that's just uh, the way things are right now, but if it's coming from the US, it seems everything gets tied to politics one way or another and it's it's exhausting i like that joe rogan just talks about interesting topics with interesting people so it relaxes me on my way into work i don't like getting all political i don't like do i don't like hearing about that first thing in the morning I mean, sometimes i'm in the mood for it but Joe Rogan really relaxes me first thing in the morning. We can talk about, you know, the origins of consciousness. And the reports of UFOs. And all kinds of other thought-provoking topics. And I like that he doesn't directly, right away, run to the same thing everyone else does and tie it to politics. It gets annoying after a while when people keep doing that over and over. So been relaxing me in the morning and that's sort of that, that's who I listen to on my way into work every day you know gets my brain turning I have something to ponder throughout my day while I'm working like, huh they're talking about consciousness what is the origins of consciousness you know is it just me I think about these things all the time oh, I hope you're ready to have some fun our trailer brakes are frozen again Hmm. All right, let's go get the banger thinger. It's in here. I'm gonna use this. A hammer works too, but you can use this as a hammer if you want to. This can be whatever you want it to be. It's gonna be a brake releaser 2000. That's what it's gonna be right now. I hope this thing doesn't have dust covers on it. Okay, let's get underneath here. This thing's been sitting here a while. Lovely. All right. Oh, get on our butt. Get on our back. Oh, and it's got dust covers on it. Ah, oh, that makes it so much harder. Okay. All right. 
It's okay. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. That's what we do. And you thought truck driving was just sitting behind a wheel holding on. Watch. We're all having a bad morning. You don't need to honk about it. Highway 8 North. Toulon is on Highway 7, but if I take a Highway 8 up to the 67, I get to avoid all of the, the rush of all the gravel trucks going into Stonewall. There's always a ton of gravel trucks going up that way. It is a little nicer and quieter to take 8 up. I've discovered this in the last few months, and I like it. <laughs> So, two hours, I was out there banging on the brakes, trying to warm them up, trying to get them unseized because they were frozen, right? Two hours, at least. The yard guys come out there and they try and help me out. They can't get it. We're out there trying everything we know how to do to get these brakes to release, right? The shop guys pull up. <laughs> they go under there and do exactly what we've been doing over the past two hours for like 30 seconds. And they say, all right, try it now. I get back in the truck, brakes release. What kind of sorcery was that? <laughs> they did exactly the same thing that I was doing for two hours. They went under there just, I guess they just finished it off. Yeah, so the brakes are obviously released now. I'm on the road. What a mess. But at least we're not late. I mean, my appointment's at noon, and I'm going to be there at about 11.30, so it's still going to be early. And uh, the four pieces I'm picking up today are going to St. Joseph, Missouri. too hard uh, the shipper guy here helped me open uh, the one side of it it's just works a lot easier if you have one guy on each side and since today is today everything doesn't seem to be working the way it should so I didn't slide as easy as it has before because all of the little rollers are frozen it's not even that cold I keep saying how cold it is it's not even that cold yet it's only what minus 20 today that's nothing. We're just getting, uh, we're just getting, getting going. It's not even winter yet. Winter starts on the winter solstice on December 21st. So the days are still going to get shorter for another month yet. 
and everything's gonna get colder until I always say last two weeks of January first two weeks of February is when the deep freeze sets in and when that sets in that's when everything breaks because nothing wants to break when it's nice and warm and convenient to fix it it all wants to break on the coldest possible day where uh, you get frostbite from exposing your skin to the outside temperature in 30 in about 30 seconds all this all of this wonderful goodness going to St. Joseph, Missouri. Hope you guys are ready. We got some stuff for you. Coming on down from Manitoba, Canada. I hope it's warmer there than it is here. It's actually not that bad. It's not that bad. The sun's come up. The day's gotten a lot better. The only thing frustrating about this morning was trying to get the trailer brakes to release in the morning. It took a couple of hours, but once we got that done, you know, I got over here. As long as you keep moving, you can keep warm. So you just gotta keep moving. It's uh, motivation to never stop working. That's why us Canadians are such hard workers. Because if we stop working, we freeze. All buttoned up and ready to head down I-29. It's a good way to know if you're a lazy Canadian. If you freeze up, it means you weren't working hard enough, okay? And the colder it gets, the harder you gotta work. That's why we keep making stuff. You gotta keep everything moving. That's actually a good good piece of advice, not just joking. But uh, when it gets cold, like it's gonna get a lot colder than this. This is nothing yet. I'm just making a big deal out of a small little thing. But if uh, once it gets down to January, February, Anything that you need to move, you need to keep moving. That's why throughout the day, we don't shut the engine off. We let it idle a lot in the morning. We, we're not gonna idle it all night when we're not using it. So we plug it in. And what that does is it, it heats up the oil, uh, the oil panel, it heats up the block so that it can turn over in the morning. Because if we didn't do that, that engine's not moving and the cold weather will freeze it solid and you won't be able to turn over the engine in the morning. That's how cold it gets. You gotta keep things moving or they, they just stop working and die. So if you're ever cold, start working, okay? And if you're still cold, work harder. It's the Manitoba way. And feel free to complain about it. I do all the time. I do, it's cold. I, I don't like the cold. I just know how to warm up again because I really don't like being cold. So I don't like being cold so much that I just work harder. Makes sense, eh? I'm gonna head back now, see if they got anything else for me. It's a really nice load to pull. I mean, it's very light. Relatively easy to tie down. And it's in a roll tight, so you don't even have to tarp it. And thanks to our wonderful shop and all the yard guys who helped me, the brakes are released, so that helps a lot. It really helps a lot when the tires can turn. Uh, it just helps things move along a little smoother. I'm full of all kinds of knowledge and wisdom. Okay, the tires aren't turning because your brakes are frozen. It's going to cost you a lot more in fuel and you're probably going to have to buy new tires. That Nobody wants to do that. Well, that looks like fun. So you got to turn right to go left. I hope this guy's not turning left. Looks like he's got his right signal on. Oh, nope, turned it off now. I don't know what his plans are. Oh, he's going south. Okay, so we gotta wait for him first before we can go. All right, all right, all right. This guy was super slow moving before. We'll see how fast he can get across this intersection. I 
We might be here a while, get comfortable. Man, that sun is extra bright today. At this time of year, it, it never really goes very high. Like that's about as high as it goes, like I've said before. So it's always in your face when you're going south. It's always in your face. Going north is nice, because then the sun's always behind you. You gonna give her, buddy? You gonna send it? No, oh, no. Good choice. Good choice. Take your time, bud, no rush. I'm not pushing you. Okay. Okay, now we gotta wait for that to clear up over there. Okay, after that car, we'll, we'll clear that way. Oh, 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 we might be clear to go. I'm going for it. Yep. Here we go. All right. We got the four ways on, the please don't hit me lights. Okay, I'm about to park in my parking spot over there. The day is just about over, but I have to prepare for tomorrow. We're jumping into a different truck in the morning, and I want to get everything uh, I need in there tonight, everything that I can anyways. Uh, it's going to be a sleeper truck. I don't think it's going to be an overnight, but it might turn into one, and that's why I'm taking it. You guys remember uh, my old Volvo uh, that I had for like three years, or two, two years, three years? It's exactly like it. This is the truck we're going to be taking tomorrow. This is unit 3056. Going to be hauling an oversized load of lumber down to Minnesota. This truck was parked by our scale and it wasn't plugged in. Even though a message went out through all of our satellite systems to every single truck saying that, hey, you guys need to plug your trucks in. This truck wasn't plugged in. Maybe it was parked there from before already and uh, no one no one plugged it in. But anyways, I got it going. I had to get out the old booster and uh, I plugged it in for a while too just to warm up the block a little bit. And eventually I got it to turn over, but just barely. Just barely. I'm gonna take some of my straps out of there and my flags, my oversized signs. I'm gonna put it in here. So that in the morning I can come just start this thing up, warm it up, and then I gotta go pick up a trailer in Winnipeg. It's one of those roller trailers again. That was fun last time we took that, right? Last time we took that up to, uh, was it Peguis or near Peguis? Up north in Manitoba. This one we're taking down to, uh, what's it called again? Park River? Park something, Minnesota. It's like five hours from here. I don't really need a sleeper truck for it, but just in case if anything goes wrong and I get delayed, I got a bed, I'm gonna spend the night. So this is going to bring back uh, <laughs> a lot of memories for me, maybe for you too. This is exactly identical to the truck I drove. Someone left their coffee in here. Not very nice, oops. We'll say that was a mistake. Yeah. Identical. It's not as nice as the Volvo, uh, which was unit 3070, that I took up to the PAW. That was a nice one, I had the wider sleeper. It was a mid-roof, it wasn't as high. Didn't have the sunroof like this, but uh, yeah, wow, just the memories that come flooding back. This is exactly the same colors, exact same truck. Except my mattress was blue. Good times, good times. Oh well, okay, we're gonna get it ready for tomorrow. I guess I could have done this all in the morning as well, but it's gonna be colder then and I don't like moving a lot first thing in the morning. <laughs> I 
think what I thrive off of personally is just changing it up every now and then. Like I said, I really like the position. I'll always say that, that I'm in now, the city position. It's perfect for me, right? But every once in a while, I let them know that every once in a while, they'll send me out a little further, either on an overnight or who knows, maybe even further. So you sort of get the best of both worlds, but only if it's available. My primary job is a city driver, so. These straps are a little frozen. They should warm up in this compartment tomorrow as I'm driving. According to my pickup truck, I have 80 kilometers of fuel range. According to my gauge, I am just above E. I don't know if you can see it there or not. <laughs> cutting your clothes today on a cold night too well, it's only minus 11 but I shouldn't be cutting it this close this isn't the smartest thing I've ever done but you know me I like living life on the edge usually I wouldn't let it go down nearly this low in winter time but it is what it is we're going to the gas station it's about 50 kilometers away all it says now is low fuel range it doesn't even know how much further we can go just pulling into the gas station we made it I fuel up here at the uh, superstore because I get the uh, points and free groceries because I'm in my 30s now and that's special to me <laughs> yep that was not smart because it's cold outside but uh, what can you do so the gas price right now is a uh, dollar thirty six nine, so a dollar thirty seven per liter. That's in Canadian. We're gonna fill it right up from empty. How much do you think it's gonna cost? Give me the cheap stuff. There it goes, my whole life savings. So I'm gonna Americanize this for you, because I know you, the, the Americans, they wanna know what, what I'm talking about. So uh, first of all, let's go dollar 37 CAD to USD. That is a dollar and eight cents US per liter. Okay, dollar and eight cents, remember that. So let's go to calculator. Dollar and eight cents divided by 3.78. That is not correct. That is not correct. No, 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 no. Times dollar oh eight times 3.78. That's four dollars and eight cents US per US gallon. So if you were in the US right now and you pulled up to a pump and you wanted to pay the same price as me, you'd be paying four dollars and eight cents a gallon. That's expensive to us. That's probably really expensive for the U.S., but the U.S. has such cheap fuel. It's always funny when you hear them saying, oh, gas is so expensive. <laughs> you guys have the cheapest gas anywhere. Europeans, they're paying like twice as much as we are here. And uh, Australians, they're, they're not too far behind them, I think. Yeah, what do you think? Is $4.08 a gallon too much for you? I don't have a choice. There it goes. We're already at $85. Okay. It's okay, just breathe. And just so you have some context, uh, like six months ago, this same Philip would have costed me 85 to $90, the whole thing. Right now I just passed $115. <clears throat> six months ago, that's how fast it shot up. And we passed 120, okay. Oh, it just clicked off at 124. So it'll be $125. 91.3 liters, $125 for you Americans, 125, I'm just going to do the math for you on Google here real quick, 125 CAD to USD, remember I was paying 4.8, no, $4.08, $98.71 to fill up my truck today, US, and 
because I fueled up at Superstore here, I get Superstore points that I can use towards groceries. Today, I got $3.19 of free groceries from that. It doesn't seem like a lot, but you add this up, plus all the other gas I buy uh, every week in Brit's vehicle, and plus you can earn points in the store when you shop in there as well. And we're getting like over $30 of free groceries a month, I think, something like that. Maybe more, 30 to $50 of free groceries. It's my new thing, Superstore points. I think they're called PC points. Uh, PC here stands for President's Choice. It's just the, uh, the brand name like George's at Walmart. So you know that I'm not lying to you for whatever reason. Fuel range is now at 612 kilometers and my fuel gauge says full. So that $125, that was me driving to work six times. So that was 600 kilometers and uh, about 360 miles, I guess. I think that's what that would be. Boy, this guy here is just really aggressive. Thanks. And then I go and reset my fuel economy gauge there. So it said nothing right now. Uh, every time I fuel up, so every week I start fresh. Actually, no, it wasn't six times. It was only five times because I, I went into work on Saturday and it's only Thursday today. It's not Friday. I still got to go in once tomorrow. Oh, so that was only five times. So 500 kilometers or 300 miles, 125 bucks. Ah. Okay, well, that's not as good.